The get behind exercise actually comes from herding. So if any of you have ever done any herding with your dogs, you understand that if you walk into a field or a pen with livestock, whether it be sheep or goats or whatever, if they see the dog come into the area first, generally the stock will separate and move and, and, run, and scatter and run away. If you walk in and the dog is behind you, the, the stock will actually start gravitating usually to you, or at least they'll lift their heads up, but they're not going to scatter. So at that point, you have time to get in there, get settled, and then if you have a border collie and you're sending the dog around to go get the stock, they get a chance to get out and around it and bring it in as a group. So I had learned with Tucker many, many years ago that with his presence on livestock, if I walked in, the stock would scatter if he was in front of me. So it was a, um, a valuable lesson that I learned probably 15 years ago. What I found with working with reactive dogs is most of the breeds that I worked with were German Shepherds, Dobermans, um, a lot of guard-type breeds, and they, of course, want to be out in front of you. Well, even the good old Lab or any of these other dogs that come in that have reactive behavior, they're out there protecting space. So if we teach them to defer and get behind us when the stimulus is coming towards us, it takes the pressure off the dog, um, the one that we're working with, and it also helps them to just tuck in behind you and let you lead through wherever you're going. So in my puppy classes, I actually teach an exercise that's called walking through the chairs, where I'll set up five chairs usually. And in this particular video, I think it might be Dazzle, that you'll just see her you know, get behind me. The first skill, and I sent you, or you guys were all given a PDF that has the written instructions. So here are the chairs, my hands are behind my back, and Dazzle's job is just to tuck in behind me. Those of you who use a clicker, if you're an instructor, can click the dog for tucking in behind. Can you see how Dazzle is navigating behind the chairs? We might play this again if it plays out, Barbara, if you can do that. Um, I'm looking for the dog to tuck in behind. You can see her come around and say, oh, you don't have any cookies. If I were going to feed her, I would feed her behind my back so that I reward the positioning of being behind me. If I had to, I could even place the treat down behind my back foot so that the dog's being rewarded for staying behind me. So I teach this in my puppy classes. For the dog, I put my hands behind my back. I make a big swiping um, arc behind my back, and I'll say, get behind. And the dogs will tuck in behind me as I walk through the chair. Then I'll come out and walk and put my hands back in a normal position, and then I'll tuck my hands behind my back again so that the dog understands her job is to get behind me. Now, Dazzle's, you know, a medium-sized or was a medium-sized dog. So for her, she's above the seat of the chair. If this was a little dog, this exercise I would be using would be orange cones on the floor. Because for the dog, there'd be too many other choices looking through the legs of the chairs and everything. So make sure if you do this exercise with a little dog or a little breed dog that you use orange cones as you go through there. So. Um, this next video is the teaching process. What I forgot to videotape, and I realized it um, after we had put this together, is I teach the dog to actually move away from, um, I usually use a metal walking stick, or um, you know, if you had a cross-country ski pole, you can put a rubber tip on it and take the basket off it. In here in the video, um, I had just had a friend come visit, and he makes walking sticks, and I had just bought one for my husband that he had put a border collie on, and it was just a gorgeous stick, and I didn't, I didn't realize until I was viewing the video that it looks like I have a club. We are not hitting the dogs with a club, and we are not tapping the dogs with the club. We will place it to block the dogs. So I just wanted to make sure that you didn't think that I, I had some new technique that I'm beating the dogs. All right, now that you're giggling. 
So this is the learning of the get behind, and I believe this is with Sean and his dog, uh, Dragon. Dragon's a pit bull, and uh, Sean's actually the one who makes these nice wooden walking sticks for us, and I, like I said, I had just bought one for my husband. So this is what we were using on this day that we were videotaping. And Dragon, he had come to me because Dragon was being inappropriate meeting other dogs. She's actually good with other dogs, but when she would first meet them, she would be way forward. And when he came to me, it was very obvious that Dragon was pulling out in front of him and basically leading him and, and pulling and gagging to go see another uh, the other dog that was coming. And then she would be aroused, and it would be an inappropriate greeting. Uh, Barbara, can you play this one one more time when it gets done? Because I want to talk a little bit about something that Jax had just done there at the very end. Um, so, again, looking at Dragon, you can see her. She's just wagging her tail. She's happy. There's um, no cool going on. You can actually click click the dog for moving away from the stick. So it's like a body blocking, but you're using the stick to block the dogs with. And it should be used as a walking stick, but then you just put it in front of the dog to get it to get behind you or to stay parallel to you. You just saw Jax go running off because what I've taught him now is that he can walk along and his reward is to get to run once we get past the other dog. So he'll stay behind until we get right next to our path, and then he's allowed to um, kick off and run. And we've got a few other videos here that will show it with a bicycle coming, because that used to be something that Jax used to like to run after, were people on bicycles, people on horses, you know, kids running and that sort of thing. Uh, eventually, we fade out the walking stick, and you'll see one of the videos with me with Jax with, without the walking stick. But for the beginning, for maybe the first four or five weeks, you will walk along with a walking stick. And then here I'm going to let Jax go in a second, or he thinks I'm going to let him go. And he runs off in front there. All right, if we can move on to the... Yep, please. Behavior. Um, so again, using it in real life situation. We're going to get on here with the get behind with distractions. And this is with Sean riding his bicycle. And you can see Jax really wants to go. Here I've got the club, but it's, I'm not using it as a club. I've got it as a walking stick. I've asked him to get behind me. He's behind. And he's going to wear a little bit. You, you know, most of the Aussies are going to. Some breeds do and some don't. Once Sean comes by, I will then release the dog and let him go running forward. So once Sean went by for Jax, the reinforcement for him was to run forward and go ahead, and, um, and that is much better for him than cookies. So Sean had gone by on the bike, and Jax is allowed to run forward. You had asked me something, Barbara, I just about wearing? I to explain what wearing yeah. means. So wearing is just the dog moving back and forth behind me. Um, if, if he was working stock, he would be wearing back and forth behind the stock as he's driving them someplace, trying to keep them within view. And, and it's a normal border collie behavior. I'm not going to correct him for that, and I'm not going to try and, and alter that behavior. It's perfectly appropriate for him to be moving around. All I'm asking him is do not charge after the person on the bicycle. He likes to lay down. And my husband goes hiking with him all over the place today. And this was a dog who initially, when you would go hiking, he'd just take off and you wouldn't see him anymore, or he'd go chasing anything he could. Now, today, three years later, if he sees somebody coming, even if it's 300 yards and he's 300 yards in front of us, he will just lay down. That's our first cue that somebody's coming. And then we will just whistle or whatever. He'll come back behind us and he'll lay down until the distraction has gone by. And it could be that people stop and chat to us. He'll wait there until he's released to run forward. Um, this has worked extremely well for him, no matter what the distraction might be, whether it's people and dogs or people on horseback or motorbikes or whatever. 